If you want to live stream to YouTube using Ecamm Live, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and this video is all about actually using Ecamm Live for the purpose for which it was intended, which is streaming to uh, YouTube or any other platform. Now, I did make a rather long four and a half hour tutorial walking you through exactly how to get Ecamm Live set up from a completely clean install to uh, building out your scenes, making overlays in Keynote, and then we linked this all together with uh, Stream Deck and programmed our keys and uh, even made these little icons for our Stream Deck using Keynote and then walked through a sort of going live checklist, everything that you need to know, except for one thing actually going live. <laughs> now if you want to find that tutorial you can find it over on my website takeonetech.io and there is a uh, the video is at the top of the page and then just below there there's also a download pack that you can get to get all of the overlays and templates that we made during that tutorial for free as well. But as I say there was one slight omission from that tutorial which was what do you do when you've got it all set up? How do you actually go live? And so that is what this video is all about. And uh, you can stream to multiple different platforms, but today I'm just going to focus on YouTube. But the process is very similar for each one. Now, ordinarily at this time, I would say I'm going to switch into demo mode and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. But I can't quite do that today because I am recording. And so I can't really show you how to record or go. I can't show you how to live stream whilst I'm recording at the same time. So unusually, this video is going to require an edit. I know it's a crime, isn't it? But there you go. So I'm going to actually do this by uh, recording my screen on my Mac and then very skillfully slice it all together afterwards. <laughs> so here we go. Right. Well, here we are. It looks a lot like demo mode, doesn't it? But it isn't because of one crucial difference. I'm not actually recording or streaming in Ecamm Live as yet. We're going to do that together. So you can see I've got my little mouse pointer. I've hidden all of the uh, scene palettes and things like that because we don't actually need any of those. Now, ordinarily, when I come into Ecamm Live, I see this little record button because I'm usually recording these except on uh, the Friday or Saturdays when I'm doing my live stream. So normally it's set to record and the way we would change this is over on this uh, right hand side. Uh, I'm looking at this side on my screen, but it makes it look like I'm looking at the opposite side. <laughs> I'll have to fake it and pretend that I'm looking at where the mouse is. So down here we've got this uh, destination and at the moment it says record only. But if I just click the little down arrow, then you don't really need to worry about this. I don't think custom stream key, that's if you're re streaming to something like Amazon Web Services, something like that, but we don't need to worry about that for today, I don't think. Uh, I actually did a video about restream.io, so that's a service that I technically use. Basically what they are is they act as a sort of hub for you to stream out to those individual services and then they will then sort of act as a relay to stream out to all of the other different platforms that you want. So if you did want to go live to multiple different platforms then that would be a way to do it. However, we're not going to do that today. We're going to concentrate on one thing <laughs> and that is YouTube. So if you have not uh, linked your YouTube account to your Ecamm Live, then you'll need to do that. But I'll show you how simple that is by showing you with LinkedIn because my YouTube account is already linked, whereas LinkedIn is not. <laughs> so if I click on LinkedIn, you'll notice that the record button has changed. It's now got a little icon for LinkedIn and it says log in. So you would simply click on that button and it will take you through to your uh, LinkedIn in your browser and then you will enter your username, password and whatever and then give uh, Ecamm Live permission to access your account and that's what it needs in order to stream to it. But we're going to come to YouTube and assuming that you have done that then what you'll see once you have linked your account is you'll see instead of a record button or a login you'll see it now says go live and that is what all you need to press technically to start streaming live to YouTube. Now as a default it would set the broadcast to public and it will also say go live now with an unscheduled live stream. 
You can come over here and enter a title for it. So if you did want to just go live immediately, you can enter, if you really can't wait, <laughs> you can just enter a title and enter a description here. Uh, you can also use this as a really good way to test things. If you just want to do a quick live stream to test and have a look back to see what it looks like, then you could do that and change from public. You could change to either unlisted if you wanted to share it with other people or private so that only you would be able to uh, view it. So uh, that is how you would set that. But what we want to do is we want to schedule a live stream. So click in the down arrow. You can see here it's brought up some different uh, live streams that I do already have scheduled. So th these are my, uh, well, my Saturday morning. They go out at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the uh, on, on a Friday in the US. Uh, but it's 4 a.m. Saturday morning, my time. Uh, so this is my next sort of three weeks of live streams already uh, scheduled. But you could come down here to schedule a new event, new scheduled live, and it will bring up this window. And here you can have uh, similar sorts of uh, things. So you can choose to have it as either a public uh, video or unlisted. That means that you could share the link and anybody who has the, the link, the URL, will be able to view it and access it at any time whereas private will be just for you and I think you can invite people by email that way but uh, unlisted would be the way if you just want to share it with somebody else or public obviously if you want to go live to the world. Then you would enter your title, your description and then here is where you can add your thumbnail. So let me just call this one uh, test very imaginatively, test stream. <laughs> and then also down here you've got this uh, stream latency. Now stream latency is basically uh, think of it, I suppose, like the lag between you actually broadcasting and it reaching your audience. And so for most things, I think that normal is fine. Some people, I think, want to have the ultra low latency so that things are going out to the internet as quick as you are making them. And people can, I suppose, it speeds up the response time from people who are, um, you know, on, in the chat and things like that. But for me, I just leave that as normal. Uh, I know sometimes with the ultra low latency, then that's where if you've got uh, any internet issues, it can uh, interfere with things. Next, you can set your uh, schedule your start time uh, just down here. And then you can also, it says additional settings can be found in the broadcaster settings on YouTube. I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, we're just going to schedule this event. And this will now be uh, sending this information over to YouTube. So you can schedule it how however long in advance you want and uh, it will all get uploaded to YouTube. Now that has uh, scheduled, what you'll also notice is that it's automatically selected it actually as it's uh, just about due. <laughs> and you'll also notice this countdown, which is the countdown until the time that it is due to start. So uh, you can start it in advance just by clicking this button. Uh, but let's wait until it runs down to the correct time and I'll try and join it and I'll show you a couple of extra features that you might want to know about whilst we are on the stream. Okay, so a couple of things to point out is that uh, you have to have some other controls down here. If you just want to scrap the post, you can press the little rubbish bin there, the garbage bin, to uh, delete the schedule event. Uh, but you can also come here to the live streaming dashboard on YouTube. So it'll click through to uh, open up that area of your YouTube studio. Uh, you can also edit the uh, event on YouTube by clicking here. And then also you can view the live scheduled event by clicking there. And that will just bring up the uh, the actual page of it on uh, on YouTube and you can see that there's one person waiting because as if by magic I've actually joined it myself on my mobile <laughs> and the reason I've done that is because I want to show you uh, something um, so if I actually start the event now I'll click on the this button here so we're starting a bit early but never mind uh, go live early it's prompting me to uh, let me know that I'm two minutes early but I will just go live now anyway for the sake of this demonstration so now it will think about it for a little moment and on my phone it's thinking about it as well and we can see what the latency is. So it started recording now. I am actually streaming from my computer and at the moment it hasn't quite started. So I've now got it on my mobile phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to here and I want to just show you if I put on this panel here which is the comments panel. I'll drag it across onto this screen. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll make my Ecamm Live window a bit smaller to try and make it, everything run a little bit smoother. Now, if I just write something, there we go. And if I click on that, 
then what we should see is at some point the comment should pop back up into the comments here. There we go. <laughs> and now what I wanted to show you was uh, how you can add these uh, to the stream. So if you just click on one of these, you can see that little box there. So if we click on that, then what you'll see is the comment comes back up here. And then once it's on the screen, you can actually move it around. And then you can also resize it by dragging into the corner. And then you can also click in here to edit. And now that's interesting. So this is what happens when you get an error. Now this could be either my CPU or my uh, internet or whatever. Would you like to try resuming the broadcast? So if this happens, <laughs> it's almost like I planned this, isn't it? Just click on resume. And then let's see if it comes back. So it looks like it is in fact coming back. So that is how you uh, show and hide the comments. And yes, indeed, we are back online. So let me just check it. So if I post another message and let's see if that one comes up and then you can just uh, hide the comments like that. And then if we come here and we just add the next one on like that. Now there are a couple of options in terms of comments. So if you click on this uh, show and hide preferences, and then we come over to our comments tab, wherever it is. Uh, then in the general section, uh, there is a thing here to automatically hide comment overlays after 15 seconds, or you can type whatever you want there. So if you select that, uh, if that is unchecked, then basically the comments will stay on screen until you press the little X button to get rid of them. Um, or if you, uh, if you have that checked, then obviously they'll stay for uh, however long you've got selected there. So if I just add this one now, you'll notice that it should stay for about five seconds. Three, two, one, <laughs> there it goes. And so that's how you can show and hide the comments. So that is how we live stream to YouTube. And now what we can do is uh, we can just end this live stream by clicking finish and then end broadcast. And incidentally, you could see just up at the top there, that's how many people are actually watching the stream as well. I forgot to mention that. So now it's uh, going to do its little thing and save the uh, the file. And there's a couple of things here. First of all, uh, it says at the bottom, a recording has been saved to this Mac. So you can go and view the file. So it does record a local copy. However, the local copy is, as I understand it, of the same resolution as was being broadcast. So if there were any issues during the broadcast, I think that that is translated over into the, um, uh, the, the output file as well. So you don't get a higher resolution from the version that's saved onto your disk, uh, onto your hard drive. Uh, but you can also from here just go and view the post or delete it. So you can actually delete it from YouTube directly from here as well. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We want to go and have a look at it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this uh, filming of my screen and then I'm going to go back into my Ecom Live to go and give you a demo of how we do it in YouTube. Well, there we go. We are back in Ecamm Live now properly <laughs> and not just a screen recording of Ecamm Live. I'm actually recording in Ecamm Live. And I did notice one thing, by the way, uh, which was um, that I hadn't quite followed my own procedures because I had neglected to just check one thing in my menu bar before I started doing all of this. And that was uh, about things that are taking up our bandwidth. If you remember from my uh, checklist video, which I'll link to down below up in the top corner, always make sure you check your menu bar to make sure that there are uh, is nothing in there that might be as well as closing down all your apps, but nothing that is hidden away in your menu bar that might be chewing up your bandwidth. Well, it turns out that I had been uh, forgotten to disconnect from a server that was downloading some data from in the UK and I'm in Thailand. So uh, that will have been chatting away over the internet in the background all of that time. And that might be why <laughs> it could have something to do with why our stream went down. But I'm kind of glad it did really because it did show the point of what happens when you, uh, if you lose connection to a stream and how you reconnect. But anyway, let's go over now to YouTube Studio. I'm going to show you how to find the stream that we've just broadcast. But also, I'll go through the process of if you want to actually set this all up manually in the YouTube Studio itself as well. 
So let's go and do that then, shall we? <laughs> Without any more waffling. Uh, so here we are in YouTube Studio 96, getting very close to 100. <laughs> uh, so up in YouTube Studio, we would go to view that particular stream that we've just done. We'd go over to our content section. And then in our videos, we can see our videos down here and they appear. And you can also see we've got a live section. So if we click on that, then that will have a, a section of videos here. And this has got all of our upcoming live streams, the ones that are scheduled, the upcoming section. But then down here, we've also got the live replay, which is basically where all of the videos are stored from your previous live streams. And look, here is the one that we have just done. If you did want to go in and add any extra information, then you could just click on the little pencil sign here and go in and edit all of that information. So you would just edit that in here. Uh, if you hadn't added a thumbnail, you could do all that. All of the sort of things that you could do with any other video on YouTube for that matter. So what if we don't want to schedule the stream from within Ecamm Live? Well, it's very simple. We would just come out of that and we'd come to this uh, Create button up at the top. And then we'd go to uh, Go Live which might be a bit confusing because we don't actually want to go live. We want to schedule a live, don't we? But still, you click on go live. Here you will see any uh, live streams that you have that are planned coming up. Uh, but we would go over to this schedule stream. Uh, you can either use the settings from your previous live stream. So if you do have something coming up regularly, you can just keep reusing the same settings and just update the titles and things like that. But we're going to create new and this will look pretty familiar to what we could do within Ecamm Live actually. So we've got a place to add a title. We can change whether it's a public, private or unlisted video. You've got a place to add a description and you've got the place to add the YouTube category that you're in and then also the time and date and then you can upload the thumbnail here or change whether it's for children or not and then create stream so it is as simple as that and if I were to do that and then click create stream in fact let me do this test two just to show you and then I'll make this one a private stream so click on try again private and then we'll come down to create stream and there we go, that's created the stream, just the same as we could have done on uh, the Ecamm Live platform. And uh, here you have the settings for late latency, comes at this stage, whereas in Ecamm Live it was sort of all part of the same setup, wasn't it? And so if I come out of this now, this is now a scheduled live stream. And then if I were to go back into Ecamm Live and show you, then this would now appear in that little drop down list of all of our streams. So that is how you go live to Ecamm Live. Well, there you go. That I hope shows how you can stream to YouTube using Ecamm Live and also the fact that things can go wrong. But don't worry, it is relatively painless to rejoin a stream if it drops out. If you found this useful, don't forget to go and hit that like and subscribe button down below and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the moment I make any new videos. <laughs> and uh, if you have found this useful, then there's plenty more videos coming up that I'll link over on the right hand side. And until the next video, have an absolutely wonderful day.